Hey IHM Saints, we're back to talk about another saint that we use to get ready for First Holy Communion, but that we can always use to remind ourselves of the importance of communion. And, and actually today, we're going to talk about another uh, one of our favorites, but this one is actually not quite yet a saint. We're going to talk about Blessed Imelda Lambertini. That's a good Italian name, right? Everybody say, Blessed Imelda Lambertini. So, uh, of course, to be blessed is the stage right before you become a saint. So, uh, Saint uh, or Blessed Imelda isn't yet considered to be a saint, uh, but she's on the way, and hopefully someday she will be considered a saint. Uh, so you can pray for that. Anyway, Blessed Imelda is considered to be the kind of patron patroness of making a good First Holy Communion, a, a fervent or loving First Holy Communion, because of what happened in her life. So even as a young child, Blessed Imelda really loved Jesus and Mary. She'd have like a little altar in her room, and she keeps statues and flowers of Jesus and Mary and all that kind of stuff. Um, and she would pray a lot, you know. And uh, But the thing that she wanted most, the thing that she wanted most was to make her First Holy Communion. But the problem was that she was too young. She was only nine years old. And back in those days, you had to be 12 years old in order to make your first Holy Communion. Uh, so, you know, she uh, was always jealous of her older brothers and sisters who would be making their first communion. And she'd say like, oh, I don't know how anyone can receive Jesus in Holy Communion and not just die out of love. So anyway, uh, what happened was she lived on a farm a little outside of the city, but in the local city there was a convent of nuns, and they taught school. And so Blessed Imelda asked her parents if she could go and stay there at the school, not just to go to school, but to like kind of live there all the time with the nuns and learn from them. Uh, so her parents agreed to that, and she went off and stayed there at the school with all the nuns. And the nuns thought she was really cute. They dressed her up like a little nun, like in a little habit, and she was kind of like their little mascot. Uh, but she was really, a, really a holy little girl, and they all loved her, but she was always pestering them, too, to be able to receive Jesus in Holy Communion, because, of course, she was the only one who was too young, uh, among all the, the nuns and things, uh, to be able to make, to go to communion when they had mass. So she'd say, please, please, I want to make my first Holy Communion. And the nuns would say, you're too young. And she'd say, but I really want to. And they'd say, all right, we'll go ask the priest. So they go ask the priest, and he'd say, nope, you're too young. Uh, so, you know, so it went. Until uh, Blessed Imelda was one day when she was 11 years old, so still a year short, and they had just finished celebrating a great special feast uh, day mass, uh, the feast of Jesus' ascension into heaven. And most of the nuns had already left the chapel. A few were still around cleaning up after Mass, but Blessed Imelda was still there. At the end of Mass, she was kneeling at the foot, uh, the, the steps, uh, at the foot of the steps, going up into the sanctuary and praying. When all of a sudden, a host appeared floating in the air above her head. And the nuns who were cleaning up uh, after Mass were like, do you see that? What's going on? We better get the priest. So they ran into the sacristy and got the priest. And they said, Father, you got to come see this. So the priest comes out and he sees this host floating in the air over top of Imelda's head, who's like oblivious. She's praying. And, um, and he's like, oh my gosh, this must be a sign from God that little Imelda really is supposed to make her first Holy Communion. So, you know, he went back into the sacristy and got his uh, little golden uh, passion. That's the little plate that the priest uses to keep the host on. And, you know, he walked over and, I guess, picked the host out of the air. <laughs> and Blessed Imelda got to make that day her first Holy Communion. And it was the happiest moment of her life. It was the, what she was always wanted. In fact, she was so happy, so filled with joy and love that her heart just couldn't take it. And she lay down there on the, on the floor of the church and died. Her heart just stopped. It was like she had a heart attack, you know? It was just under so much 
uh, pressure. I mean, it was good pressure. She was, she was thrilled. She was happy. She was in love. Though it was so intense that her heart just couldn't take it, and her heart just stopped. And she died and went to heaven. And so that is why she is the patron a saint, uh, or at least the patron blessed, of making a very devout First Holy Communion. Now, of course, that doesn't mean that people usually die when they make the First Holy Communion or any of their communions, you know. Um, but we do want everyone to have that same kind of love and joy and real uh, desire for Jesus and First Holy Communion that Blessed Imelda did. There's one other uh, special thing about Blessed Imelda, too, and that is she is what they call incorruptible. So if you are a holy person, live a holy life, a lot of the times after you have died and been in uh, the in the ground for a certain number of years, you know, 20 years, something like that, uh, the church will dig back up your body just to see how it looks. And when they dug up Blessed Imelda's body, it was still just like the day she had died. It hadn't rotted or decomposed or dried out or, or anything like that, right? She was exactly the same. That is a special grace that sometimes God gives to people, and it's called being incorruptible, or her body is incorrupt. So it's still uh, true today that you can go over to a particular church in Italy, and you can see there the uh, body of Blessed Melda, because what they did is they took her body, uh, it's in the picture that I put into the video there, uh, they put her body in a glass coffin, and it's underneath an altar in the church. And you can see, uh, look inside that glass coffin, you can still see her body, which is the same today as it was the day that she died uh, way back uh, in a long time ago, hundreds of years ago now. Um, so that is uh, another reason that we should play, pray to Blessed Imelda and uh, pray also for the day when she is recognized completely as a saint. So let's make our a litany of the saints in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Don't forget the response here is pray for us. Saint Tarsisius, Saint Thomas Aquinas, Blessed Imelda Lambertini, all right, IHM Saints, have a good day.